Cause they want control of the masses And common core, they dumb us down in the classes Without knowledge we can't gain access Built with the elders, take notes and write classes We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop We buy stocks, then we buy blocks Cause we know the truth and we tuned in to Dr. Maya uh. A BB to me, a BB for Holy A. Peace to all of my thinkers, truth speakers, and truth seekers. Welcome to another Truth to Power Talk with your sister, Dr. Ma'at. Thank you for joining <clears throat> another powerful discussion. And tonight I have with me another powerful guest, but he is no stranger to the community. Hell, he's no stranger to the world. We have with us tonight our beloved master teacher, Dr. Malana. Karanga. How are you doing tonight, Dr. Karanga? Hi, Dr. Mott. It's good to be on your program again. Thank you it's for speaking truth to the people and truth to power. I say, I say. Thank you so much, doc, doctor, because I know you say, I don't like doc. You say it sounds too much like Bugs Bunny, but thank you so much, Dr. What's Karanga. Up, doc? That's what <laughs> but thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, busy schedule to be with me and my listeners tonight. Family, take a moment out right now to thumb up this video, thumb up this video. You know, the way the YouTube algorithm works, the more you engage it, the more the video shows up or appears in, in our feeds. All right, make sure that you share this video tonight. Dr. Karanga is going to be dropping a lot of powerful, powerful information. So make sure that you share the video, Sharon is Karen. Also, family, if you are watching this broadcast on another platform, be sure to head on over to YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so that whenever I go live or upload content, you will be notified. Also, family, make sure that you that you go back and that you watch the Truth to Power Talk playlist. I've brought on a lot of our greats. I've had on Dr. Maulana Karanga. I've brought on uh, Dr. Malefe Asante, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wade Nobles, Dr. Darity, Professor Jane Smalls, Dr. Cobbins, so many greats. So make sure you go in the archives and check out those discussions. Just this past Tuesday, I brought on Baba Ashwal Kwesi. And so make sure you go back and you check out those powerful discussions. And lastly, family, join me back here each and every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Read book club. Uh, this Sunday, we will be discussing chapter eight of the book, The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. All right. And so anyway, I want to read uh, Dr. Karanga's, um, his bio. And, and, and a lot of you, you know who he is. I mean, everybody, we, my people, my supporters, I know we practice Kwanzaa. We celebrate Kwanzaa and we practice it and we promote it, you know, each and every year. And so he is the founder, okay, the creator of the Pan-African cultural holiday, Kwanzaa and the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles that we promote and that we encourage our brothers and sisters to practice year round. He's also the author of the authoritative text titled Kwanzaa, a celebration of family, community and culture. And you all, you guys, whoever been supporting me and following me, you know, I hold that book up every Kwanzaa. All right. Dr. Malana Karanga is also the professor and chair of the Department of Africana Studies at California State University in Long Beach. He is an activist scholar. He is a chair of the organization Us in the National Association of Kawaida Organizations and Executive Director of the African American Cultural Center and the Kawaida Institute of Pan-African Studies and also the co-chair of the Black Community Clergy and Labor Alliance, BCCLA. Dr. Karanga is also the author of numerous scholarly articles and books, including essays on struggle, position and analysis, Kawaida and questions of life and struggle, Ma'at, the moral ideal in e ancient Egypt, a study in classical African eth ethics, introduction to black studies, fourth edition, and Odu Ifa, the ethical teachings. All right, so he is currently writing a major work on the social and ethical philosophy of Malcolm X titled The Liberation Ethics of Malcolm X, Critical Consciousness, Moral Grounding, and Transformative Struggle. Dr. Karanga is the recipient of numerous awards for scholarship, leadership, and service, including the Paul Robeson uh, Zora Neale Hurston Award for scholarly work significantly contributed contributive to the understanding, development, and appreciation of African world culture and the CLR James Award for outstanding publication on scholarly works uh, that advanced the discipline of African and Black studies, both from the National Council for Black Studies. He is also the subject family, and I actually just purchased this book, the subject of the book by Dr. Malefe Asante titled 
Maulana or Maulana Karenga, an <laughs> intellectual portrait. And so, family, give it up right now in the chat. I see you. Give it up for our doctor, our warrior, our beloved Dr. Karenga. And again, Dr. Karenga, welcome to the show. And welcome. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's always good to come and discuss with you and your audience and supporters things that are critical to us as a people. I say, I say, and family, I was sharing with Dr. Karanga backstage how I just read this article and I want all of you to go to his website. All right, let me pull it up right now so you can see it with your own eyes. All right, so his website, ibw21.org. Today, I was reading this article, Can remembering, I, yes, yes, uh, sir. Yes, Dr. Ma, that's IBW's website. My website, although uh, Dr. Daniels has most of my articles on it, ah, oh. that's Dr. Ron Daniels' uh, uh, website. But oh. um, mine is us-organization.org. That's that's the one where you get all the articles in. But my you. my personal one is maulana.karenga at cslb.edu. But us is the one that if you go to us, you, you'll find my other one too. So us-organization.org. Yeah, I'm, I'm typing that in. It says I can't reach your site. Let me try to reload this. Oh, Timo said, I gave you, when I did my personal, I gave my email. So maulana.karenga, I mean maulana.karenga.org. Okay. Maulana.karenga.org. So That's my official website. Maulana.karenga.org. Karenga.org. Let me see. Maybe my internet, because I tried both of the websites and nothing, nothing popped up, but this other one popped up. And this is where I read your article right. today, remembering the audacious. So he takes your articles and upload them on his website. He does. He does. Ah, okay. I got you. So this yeah. was an article that you wrote back in 2016, which talked about, you know, black power and revisiting the model and meaning of it. And so you talked about black consciousness and what that is and the black power movement, the black freedom mm -hmm. movement. And it was, I gotta be honest with you, Dr. Karanga, it really, it made me hungry. You know, sometimes you, we get the knowledge and we read, read, read. And then there's a period of time where we might just put the books down and we yeah. get that, that burst of knowledge, that burst of energy to want to read, read, read again. Hey. So after I read your article today, I was like, man, I said, it made me want to read every article that you've ever written. And your divine compliment told me that you publish at least about two, two to three articles, she said, per week. And so I got a lot of, I have a lot of reading. I have a lot of reading, uh, a lot of reading to do, Dr. Karenga. Yes. A lot of reading to do. And so I just want to shout out a few people in the audience before we get started. I see Baba Amin from the Ahuvu Academy. Uh, Dr. Karenga, this is an African-centered online educational institution, a K through 12 institution uh, headed by uh, Baba Amin and his divine compliment, uh, Mama and Koyo. And so peace to, to the Uhuru Academy. So he says peace to Dr. Ma'ad and Dr. Karanga. And so I see that re is in the building. Peace and love to you, re -Ra. I see brother Gerald is in the building. Hotep to you, brother. Dora, sister Dora, she says peace and love. Peace to you. The Queen Mother Virgo Venom is in the building. She says, peace, Dr. Ma'at and Dr. Karanga. So peace to you, but love it. I see Danielle Scott. He says, Hotep, can you repost the link for Baba Kwesi's presentation? I got you, brother. I got you. Dr. Craig Samuel is in the building. He says, Abibi Fahodie, Dr. Ma'at and Dr. Karanga. Abibi Fahodie to you, Dr. Craig. I see our Queen Mother Beloved. Tiffany is in the building. Peace to you, beloved. I also see Psychological Shackle Breakers is in the building. Dr. Karanga, he says, Dr. Karanga, I used your book in my Black Studies course, Introduction to Black Studies. I say, Asante Shana, brother, Asante Shana. Bobby Wright, Bobby E. Wright, he says, mm. Habari Ghani, Habari Ghani to you. He said, Habari Ghani, Dr. Ma'ada, much love and respect for Dr. Maulana Karanga. And then last but not least, we have Lalo Love is in the building. He says, let's, she says he or she, I'm sorry, Lalo, I don't know if you're male or female, forgive me, but says <laughs> love, love to your family. So love back to you. So anyway, we're going to go in and start uh, tonight's discussion. And so you see the title tonight, we're going to be discussing COINTELPRO yesterday and today. COINTELPRO 
yesterday and today. And so, Dr. Dr. Karanga, I know that, you know, I, I don't know as much as you, <laughs> but I do know a little, little bit about COINTELPRO, but I said, I need to have this discussion with you because you lived it. You know, it's one thing to read it in a book or to yeah. read an article about COINTELPRO. It's another thing to experience yes. COINTELPRO and you actually experienced it and lived through it. And, 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 and not only you experienced it, but you watch other people, yes. you know, experience, you know, what happened, the devastating, you know, impact of COINTELPRO. So, so Dr. Karanga, could we first start off with defining COINTELPRO? What is it? I know that it was a program that was created by the FBI, but can we go into detail as to what, what was the, or is, because I, I believe that it's alive and well, right. and, it, and it just evolved, but what, what was the, the COINTELPRO? Right. And I want to start off by saying thanks for this timely uh, conversation, because you're right, it's still operative with a different name, but with similar practice, and we'll get into that. Mm. So I want to just say, I, I come to this conversation uh, as first a target, right? I was on every major list that any other organization, any other person was on. Second, I was a victim uh, of it through political imprisonment, being targeted and um, framed and put in uh, captivity or prison uh, on trumped up charges. But I'm a survivor, all right? And I was not broken, defeated, or discouraged, or bitter. And finally, I'm a resistor. I'm a mm. constant soldier, right? When I got out, I went right to the uh, restaurant and had a meeting right down the street from the prison, right? And I'm, I'm dealing with it as an activist scholar also. So I'm a, I was a target, I was a victim, I'm a survivor, and I'm a constant soldier and resistor. So that was it. So what is this COINTELPRO? Actually, the COINTELPRO started as early as 1950, uh, about, about 1957 and went to officially uh, till 70, uh, till, uh, uh, 1971, okay? In the, early, in the mid 50s to 71. And it was about surveillance. Listen to it now, you'll see the similarity. Surveillance, infiltration, provocation, misinformation, disinformation, disrupting, discrediting, framing on wrongful, uh, and more uh, framing, false charging, wrongfully imprisoning, provoking intergroup conflict, destroying the movements, movement groups, I'm sorry, destroying movement groups, disuniting the movement, and finally suppressing and destroying the Black Liberation Movement. That was its goals from the beginning, right? Mm. And so it started out, right, first with, uh, attacking even the civil rights movement during the during the 50s right so it targeted uh SCLC and the Martin Luther King and I say this because a lot of times when you hear uh the left uh, white leftists and the black Marxists they only mention the Panthers but you can see it started even before the Panthers came into existence right so it started attacking people in the civil rights movement but also it attacked the strongest black nationalist organization during that time, which was the Nation of Islam. And as you know, going back to Dr. Martin Luther King, they tried to get him to kill himself. They taped him and told him, you know, they're gonna destroy him. And they followed him around and put misinformation, uh, tried to expose and discredit the same way they did. So that surveillance, that that kind of discrediting went with him. And even after he died, as you know, uh, they continued to try to discredit him and opposed uh, his being honored in the way he finally was. And of course, let's go back to the Nation of Islam, which was so important to us and our black consciousness. When I say us, I'm not only talking about us, the organization, but us, that black community, right? I mean, can you imagine us without having the teachings of Messenger Muhammad and Minister Malcolm X? And they were mm. just a strong pair. But if you see the FBI documents, you know they worked on turning the messenger, Messenger Muhammad, against Malcolm. And making it like Malcolm trying to take over and doing this. And there was a FBI agent right in the circle, cont continuously pumping uh, false information in the circle, in the leadership circle, and turning the messenger 
uh, against uh, Malcolm. And so that was that was a big thing. And then, of course, uh, they also uh, uh, um, uh, did um, attacks on SNCC, the Deacons of Defense and Justice, CORE, the Congress of Race Equality, RAM. Uh, and what was their goal? What was their goal? Uh, so many, and of course, our organization. And what was their goal? Here it is again. They printed out not only with the things I just said, expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, right? Uh, but they said in this memo in 1968, to prevent the coalition of militant black nationalist groups. That's their first principle. Therefore, when people say, oh, uh, the Panthers were the greatest threat, they never feared one organization. They didn't fear our organization. They didn't fear the nation uh, by itself. They didn't fear uh, any uh, of the groups by themselves. What they feared, the first point they made, and listen to how they developed it, is the coalition of militant black nationalist groups, right? Mm. We say we want to prevent number one the the, the rise of a messiah uh, in a in a militant nationalist movement. We must therefore, they said, pinpoint and neutralize actual and potential so-called troublemakers. Those are the black nationalist people, the activists. And what we must we do to them? They said. We must neutralize them, right? And we must prevent these groups and their leaders from gaining respectability. And we must constantly discredit them. And the only time we expose them or mention them is when we put out misinformation against them, right? Mm. To discredit them, to discredit them to two, two or three sources. Number one, to the black community. Number two, to the groups themselves, right? The leaders to the groups themselves. And then finally, the groups and the leaders to the white liberals who might be interested in supporting. And what we must do, they say, is prevent long range growth of black militant groups, especially among young people. That was their 68 memo. And they went about this in a very vicious way, right? And, and, um, and, and in terms of us, you know, this is one of the problems of, of even dealing with this, uh, Dr. Mott, is that people want to see just one group as a victim, right? That's all you understand. But look at all the black groups that are no longer here and that were disrupted, infiltrated, turned against each other. And then the group fighting, no group, no, and, and I'll talk about this, I wanna talk about this again. No conflict has lasted as long as the conflict that is fostered between the organization us and the Black Panther Party. No, no, this is over 50 some years, right? And this still going on, rumor mongering, character assassination. But there's a there's a light at the end of the tunnel here in which our organization, us, and the San Diego original Black Panther Party signed uh, a week ago a reconciliation agreement. And I'll share that with you as Woo! we go along. That was so important. And I give a lot of thanks to Chairman Henry Wallace and his uh uh, his uh, leadership group uh, for taking that step to do it. We were always ready. Uh, we'll talk about that too. But yes. it took uh, both of us to agree and say, you know, this has gone on long enough. And also, uh, when I get to it, I want to thank uh, Minister Minister Farrakhan and his representative, uh, Minister Wali Ola uh, Muhammad, who was the moderator and who came, and uh, uh, Brother Yusuf from the um, uh, uh, Justice, Justice and Equity uh, organization in in, in uh, San Diego uh, County, and all the other groups that came to witness and support uh, this uh, uh, coming together. And what is happening here? There are two forces. It is not only the uh, the the police state, but also the white left, a segment of the white left. And you can see it, uh, Dr. Mike. You're a professor. You will see it. They erase us from history. You would never know we exist, right? And you would never know that we were suppressed and were political prisoners. People, they, uh, you know, not only put us in captivity, but drove us under and uh, uh, in exile and underground. So, if you look at this, you got the an instructive example of, of the intellectual dishonesty of these people in their books on the Cointel program. All the books on the Cointel program. Uh, suppress the Black Liberation Movement in its fullness. They only focus on one 
organizations. You look at them, all of them. I don't, I'm not even going to name their title, but if you look at them, you see. In these sources, there is the usual tendency to give inadequate treatment to the FBI's suppression of all the Black groups, only the Panthers, and to suggest in the case of our organization, us, that it was not even a victim, but a collaborator. See, and that makes the, the FBI program worked because that's what he said he was going to do. Make mm -hmm. us hate each other, make us continue this so we can never get together and struggle to ch radically change this country. This is what's so sad about it, and, but we have to keep going. And so this is done in spite when people do this, they, 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 they forget and they, these, these authors, these researchers, these scholars, they read the same context and books I read, right? I see this in there. It's in my report, my FBI file. It's in all the other files that we appear in, right? And those people misconstrue this in spite of the FBI's stated concern about our organization, us, its commitment to armed struggle and revolution. But they only want one group that said they were for self-defense, one group that's for armed struggle, right? We were we were sons and daughters of Malcolm. We still are. And Malcolm said we have a right and responsibility to defend ourselves. And we took up that challenge. And there was no one more organized, more uh, trained as a paramilitary organization, more ideologically grounded than the Simba Wachanga, the young line of the organization, us and the Saidi who trained them. And so what we have here is a continued surveillance, surveillance and harassment of us and its provocation of conflict and violence between us and the Black Panther Party in order to carry out their program, disrupt, discredit, and destroy both groups. And if you look at, they, they uh, outlined this as a new initiative with inside the COINTELPRO, because the COINTELPRO, when it started in the 50s, was also against the communists, against everybody else. They were against people, against the Vietnam War, every, all the groups that were active, they were against. But they had a special unit and a special focus on black nationalist group. And this time they had even a second one called uh, the uh, Cointel Pro against black hate groups. And then, in fact, these authors know this and they are often praised for the rigorous research, but they could not have failed therefore to note the various FBI memos and reports that state that quote, subject, that is Maulana Karinga, is a key figure on both, both the security index and the agitators in debt, and that he and us are, quote, armed and dangerous, and that the Bureau should intensify counterintelligence measures against him and his organization, including working to make other groups and even uh, my own organization members believe I was an agent. So they, they went in there, put all that out there. And that's why I tell people when they say that, they're doing the work of the FBI now to get some money. Come because on. They got money for informants. They got Come on. money for people that spread their lies and their and, and mis misconceptions. And so, uh, moreover, when the SIA, that's the Security Index and Agitators Index program, was reorganized, I and my organization, US, were moved to what is called KBE, the Key Black Extremists, and ADEX, the Administrative Index. Priority list one. In an FBI memo dated January 7, 1968, it says that us and uh, Maulana Karinga plans for a revolution and is currently training members in revolutionary attack and, and currently storing arms, unquote. Moreover, in a memo dated, and these people know this, people at your school, Michigan, that talk all this, they know this. People at all the universities, they know this, but they want to suppress us. We have been erased from history, except mm. for the more honest people, say like Malefi Asante, Dr. Malefi Asante, who wrote the only definitive book on it. The rest of it is an FBI report. All mm. of these, the, 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 the book that's out there on us, us and me, that was just leeching on us, leeching on our lives and catering to the white interest in keeping us out of history, right? But this is what, let me, let me continue here. So. In a memo dated 24, 1973, as late as that, the FBI, when they've gotten off to many of the other groups, they're still on us. And I've just, I'm, I'm in captivity during that time. I'm in my political prison. I don't, I go in in 71 and I get out 
in 75. They, I'm four years there. And one year they just put me in the, in the hole. Not because I did anything, but because they wanted to keep me from the population. And then they did medical things on, you know, they, they, they tried to keep me doped up. They did a lot of things, but they didn't break me. And I didn't mm. come out bitter and I didn't come out blaming black people and all that. I know when I see the Aryan hand, I know who the oppressor is and I don't get diverted. No matter what other people be doing things on the side, I keep my eye, not on the prize, but on the oppressor who's going to steal the prize if you don't watch him. Oh, so. And so in, in a memo dated January 23rd, 1975, the FBI claimed that it had, quote, information which indicates our organization uh, is engaged in activities which could involve violation. This is, this, is, this is because of our support of the Panthers, support of Cuba, support of revolutionary organizations across the world. They said that we were involved in violation, we could possibly be involved in violations of Title 18, the U.S. Code, uh, Section 2283, the Code on Rebellion and Insurrection, Section 234, which deals with seditious conspiracy, Section 22385, advocating overthrow of the government. Well, I told you, we don't, we, we don't, we need a new society. We don't need this oppressive society. This oppressive society, as a non offended Luhayman said, is a sick society. And yes, it's, it is. it's sick with the pathology of racism and oppression in various forms. And so the struggle must continue. And then, of course, they had us down also for Title II, U.S. Code, Section 401 and 1934, neutrality matters. That's me uh, uh, looking as if we're supporting the Panthers and also Cuba, because we argued against the unjust and immoral and illegal boycott of the whole Cuban people, making them suffer, denying mm -hmm. them even access to medicine. That's why we always praise IFCO and Lou Walker, who's really loved by the Cuban people, who always broke that, broke that boycott. And we participated in that as in, in the 80s and, and 90s in breaking that boycott. And we, and we will always support black people wherever we are and, and progressive people and people struggling. We feel a commonality with them. And then finally, Title 18, Chapter 12, Section 231, anti-riot laws. <laughs> they call our resistance anti-riot and we're talking revolt. Now, one could argue that the FBI was, you know, like uh, overreacting, just like the church committee said that the FBI was overreacting when they said that the Panthers were a serious threat to the U.S. And they said at no time was this so. And I accept that. But guess what? We are a threat together. We are weak apart, but we are a threat. No matter how strong we are, we cannot win by itself. No right. group can win by itself. That's and even right. we, united, need allies. And so what is key here is that this classification of us led to all kinds of brutal suppression and harassment of us, imprisonment of me and our other members on trumped up charges, and the driving of many of our organization members underground and in exile in other countries. This mm -hmm. classification that they put on us and the treatment came from not only them, but also the local police and in the army intelligence agencies in proposals called Clay Cable Splicer. That was another program that they directed against us. And that's another one was Garden Plot, which are clearly directed against the organization, us and me. Thus, for some authors, it's character, character assassination of us. They claim an exclusive position for the Black Panther Party and leave out and diminish the impact of the Cointel program on us, the nation of Islam, uh, you know, was just tremendous to, I think maybe than any other organization, uh, you know, started out at such a violent you know, suppressing of that organization. But the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, the Revolutionary Action Movement, or RAM, the Congress of Racial and Quality Corps, and even the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, as I told you, and Martin Luther King, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, non Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. and of course, the movement in general. And to, to leave all that out and focus on one organization is dishonest, but it's also carrying out the program of COINTEL. Ooh, Dr. 
Dr. Karanga, that was, oh my goodness. People, I'm, I see Mama and Koyo is in the building. She said, my, my, Baba, you are speaking. That was just fire. And so like you said, just to, to leave out, you know, to, I hear what you're saying. It's disingenuous. And you said it's um, dishonest. Uh, dishonest, you know, to just to just say, hey, Cointel fo Pro focused on one organization. You said that stuff started in, you said 51. Did you say 51 all the way to the 70s? 57. They put it together and started moving it in in, in hard gear against uh, SCLC, the deacons of defense. These are the uh, groups during the civil rights uh, period of the Black Freedom Movement. So the Black yes. Freedom Movement had two phases to it. The civil rights movement from 55 to 65 and the Black Power Movement from 65 70. to uh, 75. And okay. so they had, uh, they started with SCLC and and the, uh, Martin, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, and uh, CORE uh, and um, uh, uh, the Deacons for uh, Defense and Justice. They were a self-defense group in the South. And see, people can be nonviolent if you got a self-defense group defending you, like come on, Robert come on. Uh, Williams did and Mabel Williams, uh, I should say, Nina, Robert, Nina, of course, y'all know, is uh, honorific. And we try to say it especially for our ancestors. Uh, but also you can do it for people living, but especially for uh, the answers. So Nana Robert uh, uh, Williams and and his house, his wife, uh, uh, Nana Mabel Williams, uh, organized black people. He came from the Marines. He came home and the KKK was threatening the blacks of Monroe, North Carolina. And he put together a program and, and beat them off when they came to raid the, raid the black neighborhood. And uh, then the U the European just now here it is the Cointel Pro again. They charged him falsely with kidnapping when a white couple walked into the neighborhood, and they shielded them so they wouldn't be killed, right? And rather than giving them credit for that, they put him on the FBI wanted list. He had to travel. He went to China, but he got support for Mao and the Chinese Revolution for Black struggle. That was the major time and only time a country stood up and supported our, our struggle in that way, right? And then, of course, he went from, uh, he first went to Cuba. And then he Cuba gave him sanctuary. Then he went to China. Then he went to Tanzania. And finally, he came back. Uh, Timoya, my house, my wife, my companion, all things good, beautiful, and sacred. And I, in 1977, went with a Black uh, educator, independent Black, independent Black school educators are uh, led by the tour was led by Kalamu Yasalam and his house uh, Hayati uh, Salam and I, and I was a spokesman for the group and um, uh, we we met uh, Robert Williams in Peking uh, Be Beijing we should say Beijing we used to call it Peking but Beijing uh, and it was just good and I saw him again when he came out uh, and so uh, he was he was a strong fighter uh, we uh, sponsored and brought his his wife, uh, Nana May, uh, Mabel Williams, out to speak at uh, Hey Kahlo at our African American uh, Culture Center. And she was strong. She kept his legacy alive, and we should honor him uh, for his strong argument for self defense. In fact, as you know, if you read that, uh, as you read that uh, article on Black Power, Absolutely. I define Black Power as a collective struggle of a people to achieve and sustain three things self-determination, self-respect, and self-defense. And that self-defense right. was rooted in both Ma uh, Nana Haji Malcolm's teaching as well as uh, Nana Robert Williams and Mabel Williams' teaching. Mm -hmm. Not Ashe. Nana Mabel Williams' teaching also. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. Dr. Karanga, let me ask you this. How, yeah. do you, how do you feel like COINTELPRO impacted, you know, Black activism and Black progress? Okay, first of all, it disrupted the movement disrupted so people couldn't do their work right we had to go underground before i was captured i was underground a lot of times we couldn't even go out and organize anymore and then other people had to leave the country right and then people were being put in captivity so this is neutralizing us as they wanted to do that's that's the first thing it's disrupted the struggle second it caused conflict between internal to the groups and between groups this is what happened. This is the legacy. It created rumor mongering. Look, look, look at what the FBI, there was an article in the San Diego Union that talked about what the FBI was doing 
how it um, shot at us, said it was the Panthers, shot at the Panthers, said it was us, how they developed uh, cartoons, uh, 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 bragging uh, uh, as if they, I'm bragging against about our defeat of the Panthers or doing something to them. And then they sent those to the Panthers and sent us some things. And I tried to reach out to the Panthers. I told them, you know, something's wrong. There's an error in hand. You which call it, well, we, we had some other names for it, but you know, I'm saying the error in hand, white, the white hand is there in this. But the white, the segment of the white left kept telling them, don't listen to Karenga. They just come by last that's my, uh, my house name. Don't listen to him. Y'all become y'all the rising tide of history. They're gonna be wiped out. They're not gonna be here much longer. Mm. But actually, here we are. Here we are, right? And and what they tried to do to us, they weren't able to do. So it did that. Then also it discouraged people from taking hardline stands. It even transformed the people who used to talk black. Look what it did. People moved from talking about black power to green power. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. they, they started talking about, we don't need to be talking about black. We're American. It, it laid the groundwork for people to argue being black is a casualty. Let's try some other identity, right? And so you got this proliferation of identities now, right? Where people don't talk about what I call the primary identity. I don't care what you are. If you are black, that's your primary identity. So if you are heterosexual, homosexual, transgender, so because they have a lot of sexual identities also that sometimes conflict in their mind with being black. But for me, if you're black, that's your that's your link with me. I, that's why I tell people, right, come in here as a black person, we can talk. We can talk about whatever you want to. But if you put something, if you erase the black, what's the basis for us talking? Because you can find... No, you can find common ground with whites and with other other people if you just have this other identity. But you can only be black with us. We can only be black with ourselves, right? And so I'm arguing that this movement, this this crushing of the movement, this division of the movement, made people doubt the wisdom of arguing and struggling for and defiantly defining themselves as black. And there's some of it coming back, of course, as you know, but it has a different ring to it, right? It right. has a different ring to it, and everybody knows that. And so you end up qualifying it. You find yourself saying black and brown. Now, you know, I'm not against brown people, and I'm not against third world people, right? I'm not. We were arguing with them, organizing with them. I used to teach black and brown uh, organizing. This is before Mexican had even had, had a, a great number in, this, in, the, in the state. And in the country, right? But we thought it was right, and we have to have allies against our major and common oppressor. And like I said in my latest article, people can say what they want and call us we and all that, but in the final analysis, it's white people that control this country. And when they say we're divided, they mean white people are divided, right? That's the we are, and they asked us to take sides with them, right? And so I think it's very important for us to come to the table as one. And I say operational unity. That's a concept I introduced in the 60s. Unity and diversity, unity without uniformity, unity in, per in principle, purpose, and practice. So let's first unite on principle. Second, let's have a common purpose. And third, let's do something. Let's practice, right? That's what we've got to do. I'm not one of those persons, let's stop talking and get acting. No, we got to talk. We got to have principles. We got to be clear about our purpose then we can practice. Absolutely. Absolutely, doctor. And so let me ask you this, because this kind of came up when when I heard you say how, you know, when COINTELPRO uh, dismantled and, and destroyed the, the movement or stopped the movement yes. and destroyed organizations, you said a lot of Black people who were talking Black you know, change their tune. It kind yeah. of it kind of makes me think about what's happening now. With you got like Kanye. I don't know if you're up on Kanye and Kyrie and all of this anti-Semitism stuff that's happening in the media. And now you have black folks who own their own platforms. Well, I don't say they own their own platforms, but they own these big platforms. Yeah. It's kind of like they're scared to say anything. They don't even want to. They don't even want to speak because it's like okay, you look at Kanye. They stripped him 
of all of his endorsements, right? All mm -hmm. of his endorsements and sponsorships. Took and so Oprah off the place for a while, you know? <laughs> and she just said, white people are white. You know, that Jews are white people. And that there was, the war was white people killing white people. And that, that was, that was that, was that Oprah or was that Whoopi? No, that was Whoopi. Did I say Oprah? You said Oprah. Yeah, you Whoopi. said Oprah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that was Whoopi. I mean, that was Whoopi. 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 Yeah. Thank so you. now, so 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 now, so now you have black folks saying, "Ah, oh, man, I don't want to get involved with that. I don't want right. to. I don't want to touch it." So it seems to me that the more things change, the more things uh, remain the same. And so anyway, I think let me go to my next question. So I asked you about black progress and uh, how did how did Cointel Pro? Could you get into this? Someone in the chat. And he, he asked a question. He said, why was, hold on, I'm trying to look for this brother's question mm -hmm. in the chat. He asked you, he said, uh, bu, 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 bu. here it is. Here it is. I put it on the screen. He said, Dr. Ma, would you please ask Dr. Karenga to explain why he states that the white left targeted him in the organization, us? Yeah. Yeah. A segment of the white left. I usually say the white left, but if I said just white left, I mean a segment of the white left, especially and they had chosen the Panthers. And that's one of the reasons, you know, we, we used to work with the Panthers and we had disagreements, right? We agree with the Panthers when we, some, let me just tell you some of the common things, right? The common thing was that we both were serving black people. Second, we both thought we were, and argued that we were revolutionary. So when people say the cult of nationalism is revolutionary nationalism, no, we all were revolutionary nationalism, but it's a question of what we focused on. There's a political nationalist that is revolutionary that focused on just politics. There's a religious nationalist that focused on religion as an answer. There's the economic nationalist that uh, focused on economics as liberation. But there's a culture nationalist that argues that all of that is necessary but not sufficient, that we need a total concept and a total approach to the revolutionary struggle. And that's what culture is. Culture is the totality of thought and practice by which a people creates itself, celebrates, sustains, and develops itself and introduces itself to history and humanity. And that occurs, as I've said so many times, on seven basic levels at least. History, religion, social and religion, spirituality, and ethic, social organization, economic organization, political organization, creative production, which is your art, your music, your literature, etc. And finally, ethel, the collective psychology you achieve as a result of thought and practice and sensitivities in the other area. And so what happens here is that I'm arguing for a cultural revolution. I'm arguing for culture nationalism. Mal Malcolm said we need a cultural revolution. Until we break, we said, the monopoly that the oppressor has on our mind, liberation is not only impossible, it's unthinkable. You can't even conceive it. If you can't imagine reform, how do you imagine and practice revolution, right? If you if you can't imagine freedom, how do you fight for it? If you say to yourself, I'm free, I don't know about y'all, I'm free. I'm not African, I'm American. Well, can you be both? Can you, can you get your identity from two sources, historical origin and social location? That's why we say African-American. We, we didn't come from the moon and we didn't come from Paris and Sweden. We came from Africa, right? And we've got to recognize that. So we are, Amer we are American by social location, but we're African by origin and by history. And we have to keep that in mind. So here's what happened. If you look at God, uh, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, not a Marcus Garvey, the leftists through the Brotherhood, um, the African Brotherhood, that's the, this black Marxist group, uh, led by Cyril Briggs, they continued to attack Garvey. And why were they doing that? Not only because they disagreed with him, but because they were fighting for the same constituency. Mm. Everybody realized the revolutionary potential of black people. We're at the bottom. If we rise, everybody benefits from it. That's why we have to keep reminding the Jewish people when the Gentiles, their white brothers, kept them from med school at Harvard and Yale, it's black people that gave them space at Meharry and Howard. And they worked together. But what happened is we knocked down doors we couldn't even go through. But white people could go through them and other people could go through them. So we can we can create something but we might not be able to get to it in order for us to get to it we have to radically reimagine it and reconstruct this country 
And so the first thing we need to do in order to do that is to help turn our people into a self-conscious revolutionary radical force for good and for transformation. And we're struggling. Notice how the white people, and we should tell them this in the 60s, don't come and take us to lunch or bed, right? Mm, That's not mm. proving anything, right? You got to go where your mama and your father are. They got the power. Transform them. But they work in our community. Why don't they work with their people and do the? And then we can meet and say, hello, let's let's take inventory. Where are we now? I'll organize us. I don't need the white men to organize. I have to tell somebody on the campus, you don't invite me to a Black History Month program. That's even, not even your history. That's appropriation, right? Right. This is right. Our history. We might invite you, but you can't invite me to my own history. You know, I mean, hey. So I'm saying to the people, and they don't like that. They believe we got to work together. Yes, we do. But you don't have to do it just in the black community. It's the white people got the problem. Do, do, every time every time we be talking, people, well, we got to heal. Well, if they stopped wounding us, we wouldn't have to heal. <laughs> right. and heal when, when they say you, they want you to heal, they don't want you to be mad. But Malcolm said, you got a right and responsibility to be righteously angry. He said, people that don't get angry about injustice, they are paralyzed. They don't do anything. But if you're angry about injustice, he said, even the Christian, Jewish, and Muslim God gets angry about injustice. Why wouldn't black people? What's Come on. Come on. Why can't we get angry about what's being done to us? And I tell you this, as I told my house this when I was in captivity, you know, if you're sad, it's just going to depress you and immobilize you. But if you're angry, you keep moving. So the most important emotion in struggle is anger at your oppressor and love for your people. It's got to be I a see. dual thing. You got to love your people, but you also got to be angry or you won't do what you need to do for love of your people. So just again, to sum up, I said the reason uh, for the brother's question the reason that they were anti me is because I also, not only do we struggling for the same audience, right? The same people, because blacks are the revolutionary group. Uh, and, I, and I'll go back to Malcolm and, and, and Dr. Malcolm, Dr., uh, Dr. King and Haji Malcolm on this in a minute. But the reality is that we are the revolutionary vanguard. We're the social and more key social and more vanguard in this country and it's not taking anything from anybody else but no those not people at all. could get free and it wouldn't mean us but if we're free you don't even have to ask can you go into a place if we can go into it anybody in the world can go into it but anybody else that opens up doesn't mean we can go out so that's it then so we we had a certain social location that at the bottom when we move everybody benefits and what we did is argue for the European to go to his own community and act, and we can form an alliance in struggling against the institutions that have turned white hatred and hostility into public policy and socially sanctioned practice. That's what we argued. And they also didn't like me stressing culture because then we want to be independent, right? Right, right, See, right. Cult, cult, we're not dependent on them. We don't come to the table naked and in need, but we come fully clothed in our own culture. They That's put right. something on the table, we put something on the table. They come from their position, we come from our position. This last point. When SNCC, who was, which was an integrationist organization, and CORE, which was an integrationist organization, put the white people out we agreed with that and supported it because we believe in self-determination. The same reason they did it, we supported them in it. The Panthers brought them back in the movement. And they brought them back. And when they brought them back, they began to turn. They used to be black nationalists like we were. But after they became Marxists and they argued against us taking a cultural position as if it wasn't revolutionary, our position was culture is the most revolutionary source you can have. In fact, as Sekou Touré, Nana Sekou Touré and Nana Emma Cabral said, uh, the national liberation struggle itself is an act of culture. 
and mm. define culture in such an all-encompassing way, everything we do is based on culture. And we have to create a culture of struggle. And we have to maintain that culture. Otherwise, we will hug our chains rather than break them. Mm. Ashe, Ashe. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Dr. Karinga. So I want to go back to the Black Panther because you said, I'll get to it later, I'll get to it later. So you said that you all signed a, a truce. And so I wanted you to kind of, I want you to talk about that. And because some people may not be uh, even aware of that history. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do know that, uh, well, I heard it, read some stuff. Really? Like I said, yeah. you lived it. You lived it. So it's a difference between me reading something and you. But yeah. they said that in, in, when Geronimo Pratt was released from um, prison, I believe this was like in 94, 97, yes. when Geronimo Pratt was released, um, he said that you weren't involved in a lot of the stuff that the, the, that the bones that people put out about you yeah. and us. They said Geronimo Pratt, he came out and he said, no, nah, they found out that it was all the FBI, you know, the FBI and the CIA, right. it was intelligent agencies. He said, no, nah, right. they didn't have anything to do with that. So, but despite him coming out, and I think he actually published something on that. Yes, oh, in his autobiography and yeah, in an article he wrote. Yeah, that it was an article that he wrote. And he was just- and like, in his interview with Bakari, what's Bakari say? Um, how could I forget Bakari? I'm so used to saying Bakari. In Soul Magazine, uh, there was an article in which he, uh, did I keep thinking about yeah, but yeah, but Geronimo Pratt, even despite him saying, Hey, he didn't have anything to do with this, his organization didn't have anything to do, do with this. Okay. Again, 20 30 years later, people still spread the rumor, it's still it's still out there. So, could you talk about the conflict and then can we can we end with the treaty? Yes, we can. And, and see, that's why I'm saying there's an error in hand in this, it's not just the police themselves, but a segment of the left that really hates us. And they hate that we're as revolutionary as anybody else. We're committed. Just like I said, I don't, ex I'm, a, I'm an African socialist. I, I'm Ujamaa, right? the same that uh, uh, Nana and Walimu Nyeri talked about, but I don't, I, don't, I don't accept white people teaching me. Mm -hmm. And I argued that we need culture nationalism. And culture nationalism is based on three basic principles. One, that the defining feature of any people or nation is its culture. That for people to be itself and free itself, it must be self-conscious, self-determining, and rooted in its own culture. And third, that the quality of life of a people and the success of its liberation struggle <clears throat> depends upon it waging cultural revolution within <clears throat> and political revolution without, resulting in <clears throat> a radical transformation of self, society, and the world. And so we have stood with that position, and we had that position when we used to work with the Panthers. And so we said, uh, uh, Chairman Henry uh, Wallace and I met some, <clears throat> <clears throat> pardon me a minute, <clears throat> <clears throat> met a few years ago and we started talking and said we need to talk about making peace that is important to our people, to the movement, right? <clears throat> and we need to solve this together. <clears throat> and so we drew up uh, 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 an agreement. <clears throat> and uh, the agreement says, uh, having met and had discussions over years concerning the origin, causes, and tragic consequences and continuing negative impact of the us Panther conflict on the Black community, the Black liberation movement, on our organizations, and the compelling need for reconciliation. We noted also that early in initiatives had been undertaken by various persons and groups to bring about reconciliation between the two organizations and to end the conflict. And we recall that before the conflict, our organizations worked together, as I said, in Los Angeles and in San Diego, in the interest of our people and in the interest of the Black Liberation Movement. But we recognize and condemn, this is reading from the uh, text, recognizing and condemning the disruptive, divisive and destructive role of the US government and its instrument of surveillance 
and suppression. The FBI COINTELPRO. It played, we recognize the role it played in causing and sustaining the conflict and wreaking havoc on the Black Liberation Movement. We go on to say deeply concerned about the <clears throat> initial and continuing toll this conflict has taken on our members and organizations, the community and the Black Liberation Movement, mindful of the compelling desire and need of our people for reconciliation and a principled and practiced unity so that critical cooperative work and struggle can be pursued in the interests of our people, committed to service and power to our people and to the work and struggle together in various ways and on many for, uh, fronts this requires. We are recommitting ourselves to the ongoing struggle for liberation of the good of our people and the well-being of the world and all in it. And we are determined to join our efforts to achieve and promote reconciliation as a principle and practice between our organization and in our community. And we conclude these beginning marks by saying, we signed this reconciliation agreement as an initial but important step toward reconciliation and as a model and encouragement for others. We also take this beginning step to help rebuild community unity and to aid in rebuilding the overarching movement to expand the realm of freedom, justice, and other shared goods in the community, society, and the world. And we do this also in hope, in hope that other organizations and groups with similar conflict might find the strength and will to reconcile their differences as we have done. Therefore, we agreed to the following principles, these seven fundamental principles, to practice mutual respect for each other and for each other's commitment and contribution in service and struggle for our people and the Black Liberation Movement. And that's one of the reasons I respect Geronimo so much. Yes. He read my material in captivity. I met him first when he came out of captivity. We spoke at uh, Essence Conference, that yearly annual conference they had. Both of us were speaking. And he walked up to me, I walked up to him, and we embraced, and he told me, the Husea really sustained him. And yes. I'm like, yes. And so <clears throat> he had said those things about me in terms of, you know, people got to stop uh, accusing me falsely in character assassination even before I met him. And then the brother I was telling you about that interviewed him is Bakari Kitwana, who is an author that writes a lot on hip hop, right? In, in a popular culture. So the second thing that we said. We commit ourselves to practice operational unity, unity and diversity, constantly seeking common ground while recognizing our different but related positions, views and interests in our shared commitment to and love of our people. Third, we, com we commit ourselves to refrain from verbal and physical threats or use of force directly or indirectly mm. against each other and we commit ourselves to settling disputes and conflict by mutually respectful and peaceful means. Fourth, we commit ourselves to refuse to participate in or be receptive to character assassination, hating on, derogatory and untruthful statement, rumor, rumor mongering, and misrepresentation of each other, and to encourage principles, dialogue, and discussion around issues of difference as well as issues of common ground. Fifth, we commit ourselves to expose and resist the continuing clearly stated plans and actions of the COINTELPRO uh, forces to discredit, divide, disrupt, and neutralize us and our people and the movement. And six, we commit ourselves to promote the process and practice of repair and reconciliation and building a principled unit to end struggle vital to building community and waging a victorious struggle. And finally, we commit ourselves to work together on projects of mutual interest and common ground in the interest of African and human good and the well-being of the world. Ashe, Ashe, Dr. Karenga. So, so let me ask you this. This is my final question. Yes. How, what does COINTELPRO look like today? Well, it looks like the way it was before. Mm. Number one, <clears throat> if you look at it, it talks about, first of all, surveillance. The state has a greater capacity now 
to surveil than it ever had. There's something on every corner. Even your phone is suspect. Rescue mm. my phone. Sometimes my phone turns on. I don't even, I have nothing to do with it, right? I mean, they have their capacity. And 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 some countries and tech uh companies have developed ways to help suppress the movement all over the world, right? And we have to be aware of that. So the other thing that we know is it was police violence and suppression everywhere, right? And so what you see here is not only the violence, but it's gotten more outward because the laws have made it easier for people to get away with murder. And only as you saw some summers ago with the constant struggle to hold the state accountable will you get any kind of accountability, let alone justice, right? The infiltration of the organizations is still going on, right? They're provoking and sending out misinformation and disinformation. Look at Trump getting black people not to vaccinate. You know, now if black people made that decision themselves, we could argue with them. But if you're taking that decision from Trump, because you don't know that, one of the greatest powers in the world is the power hmm, to define reality for people and to make them accept it, even when it's to their disadvantage. All that talk against the vaccine, Trump took it. And all the people around him took it. But he tells black people and make black people feel, because black people are already you're into the conspiracy kind of conversation. If a black doctor tells you and a group of black doctors tell you, look, hey, this is your best way to not die. And we're dying and have died and continue to die. You know, it's like 400 people dying every day still. Mm. But people keep it off. They keep it off the media because Americans don't want to be told they can't kill everybody and conquer everything. They don't want to be told that. They want to be happy. They want to go around unmask, right? Now, I know we can get some arguments on this, and I know the national community is that strong in there, but I'm saying to you, my position is to take the vaccine. You got, got to protect yourself, and you got to think about the people that are more vulnerable. You might have a strong immunity system than somebody, because of course you can't beat the, the virus, but you, you might have stronger than your grandmama, say, for example, or your child. So think about other people. But I, that's another cut. I don't want to get diverted, but Trump lies as a way of life. And the people that are around him do the same thing. And so they're giving bad information and they make us hate people that we don't even know about. Mm. Can you imagine that? And going to fight. I told a white man, I refuse to go in the draft. Jews have draft. I told a white man, I'm not going anywhere unless we all myself to go to Mississippi. I, I'm ready for that. But to go and kill some yellow people for white people, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, and, and we need rights here. So anyhow, uh, also framing uh, and false charging and wrongfully imprisoned people, right? I mean, they're still doing that. That's what mass incarceration, incarceration about. And like I said, they got more support for it. In 1970, I, I, I don't have my, let me see. In 1970, if I can, I'm just telling you how many people there were. How did I lose? In 1950, there was 350,000 people in captive, in, 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 in jail and prison. Today is 2.3 million. And 66% of those are people of color. And most of those are black. Hey, that's way past the movement. That's right. Rescue me if I'm wrong. And they're doing it under the color and camouflage of law. Because that's the difference between racism and racial prejudice. If I said so much before, racial prejudice is a hatred and hostility toward people who are different and vulnerable. It has to be vulnerable now because people that just are stronger than you are the same uh, power for you. They don't care whether you live or die. You can't do nothing to them. But to pick on vulnerable people. And we can never get used to that. I have to say that every time. And I have to refer to Nani C.T. Vivian, who told the white sheriff down there to knock them down when he was just trying to vote, right? They said, what kind of people are y'all, right? What he was asking, how can you hate me and I haven't done anything to you? How can you stop me from doing what is rightfully mine to do, right? We can't get used to that, but we got to keep struggling regardless. What else are they doing? As you, as you, I mean, if you just look at it, it's the same thing. 
provoking intergroup conflict, keeping this long uh, standing grudges and grudges elsewhere uh, uh, so people can't unite, and suppressing the movement where they can, trying to criminalize the movement because they have racialized crime. They make black people say black crime, black on black crime. We don't ever say white on white crime. We don't say white crime, right? So once they racialize crime, they criminalize a whole race and they can mm. do what they want to it. And I was saying the difference between prejudice and racism, prejudice is just hatred and hostility toward those vulnerable uh, and, 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 and uh, <clears throat> different. But racism is turning that hatred and hostility into public policy and socially sanctioned practice. Not only do you turn it into law, but you get people to sanction it. So people say it's right. And if black people aren't careful, they will agree with the white oppressors. And so we have to struggle to continue to teach our people, to reach our people, to dialogue with our people, to constantly love our people and lift them up and teach them the possibility of a life without oppression, a mm. life without oppression. And you get them involved in an unbreakable, unbudging blackness that mm. is dedicated toward the awesome, righteous, and relentless struggle to bring good into the world, to achieve African and human good, and secure the sustained well being of the world. Mm. Fire! Oh my goodness, goodness. That was Baba. That was Baba, Dr. Karanga. That was amazing. Uncle Nini, that was amazing. Thank you so much for all of your um all of the hard work that you have been putting in uh for decades uh to advance uh our people, to liberate and advance our people. So I just say Asante Sana for all of your hard work. A lot all of your hard work, a lot of your energy. You you dedicated your life. To, right. to black liberation, Teach. you know, yeah. So we thank you. I thank you. We thank you, Okanini, for all of all of the things that you've done. And so, do you have any closing words for the listening audience? Mm -hmm. I thank all the advocates of my organization for sustaining me. Without my organization, I'd be a different kind of person. You know, I'm always thank my house, my wife, my companion, all things good, beautiful, and sacred. Tiamoya Karing. I thank my organization for keeping the faith and holding the line and I, I, I and i love our people and i just want them to continue the struggle because we are key people in a key country and our liberation would not only advance the realm of freedom and justice in this country but indeed the world and we have to keep on so we say this is our duty to know our past and honor it to engage our present and improve it and to imagine a whole new future and to forge it in the most ethical, effective, and expansive way. And this too, my people, continue to struggle, keep the faith, hold the line, love and respect our people and each other. Practice the Nguzo Saba, mm. Umoja, unity, Kujichagalia, self-determination, Ujima, collective work and responsibility, Ujama, cooperative economics, neo purpose, Kaumba creativity, and Imani faith. Be constantly attentive to the well-being of the world and all in it. And dare, and dare, whew, dare re help rebuild the overwhelm, overarching movement, the overarching movement. That's just a part of it, but the overarching movement that prefigures and makes possible the good world we all want and deserve to live in and leave as a legacy worthy of the name and history African hotel. Ashe Hedy. Hotep Ashe. Thank you so much, Dr. Karinka. So what's going to happen, family, is this. I'm going to play uh, my outro, and then I'm going to let you all. I drop the link in the chat. Let me drop it in the chat again. I'm going to play my outro, and then after that, I have a few, a few words that I need to say to some of the stuff, some of the foolishness I saw going on in the chat. And I want to address that. So Dr. Karanga, I will let you go and I will be in touch. I'm definitely going to, um, I need the information to the 
to uh, to donate to your organization. So I will reach out to your divine compliment to Please. get that. Yeah, I'll get that from her. So I can I like definitely, that. yes, yes, yes. I reach out to her so that I can get that information and make sure that we donate to your organization. Again, thank you so much, thank Dr. You, Karanga, for your time, your energy, and your efforts. And peace. And thank and you, Dr. Mike. Thank you. Oh, no problem, Baba. I'll be in touch. Well, all you do. Okay. Ashe, I'll time. be in touch. Let's come back and fight back with maltracks. The war, the minds, they want control of the masses. And common core, they dumb us down in the classes. Without knowledge, we can't gain access. Build with the elders, take notes and write classes. We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop. Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop. We buy stocks, then we buy blocks. Cause we know the truth and we tuned in to Dr. Maya. All right, I got to address some things that I saw in the room. Um, a lot of trolls came into the room tonight. Uh, based to, to, to be disrespectful to uh, the elder. And, and you said a lot of things that I know that if you were in his face or in my face, you wouldn't see. See, the internet, as I tell so many people, has become the coward's playground. See, we hide behind these screens. We hide behind these names right? These fake names on the internet, right? And we turn our cameras off. You don't see who we are. You can't see our true identity, but we know who you are. You created a digital footprint and your device is attached to it, the internet, which is attached to an IP address. So we know how to find you. But, but that's besides the point. The point that I'm making is, is this, you're a coward. You are a coward. You're a coward. You'll sit here and throw, throw insults and disrespect an elder but you go work for white folks every day who disrespect, who not only disrespect, but dis literally killed your ancestors, put them at the bottom, the bottom of the, the dominance hierarchy. They still got their damn foot in our neck. And so you'll come in here and throw eggs and rocks at an elder, but then get up tomorrow morning to go work for white folks. You go support all of their institutions. You go get gas from white folks. You, your children are in the public food system. Shout out to Bob Amin and Uhuru Academy. You, you don't put your children in there. No, 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 no. You send your children to the public food system. So you sit up here and you, and you get tough. We get tough with each other. We get tough with each other, but then we won't go out there and, and get tough with white folks. We go to work and it's yes, sir, no, sir. And we punch the clock, don't we? Or we go back and we put our money in their banks, don't we? And we go to their shoot supermarkets and we shop in their stores, don't we? Right? So you got all this vitriol for him. But what about the vitriol for the people who actually got their foot on your neck? You got vitriol for him, but then you have George, George Zimmerman is still walking around signing autographs on Skittles. Where's the vitriol for George Zimmerman who killed Trayvon Martin? Where's the vitriol for the officers who killed Tamar Rice and Breonna Taylor and Sarah, what was the girl name? I know I'm oh, oh, name Sarah what y'all tell me the last name. Sa Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland. Where's the vitriol for them? But you're coming here and disrespect an elder and you haven't even done a tenth of what he's done for our people. He created cultural and educational institutions for our people. Show us your work. Show us your work. Drop a link to in the chat. Drop, drop a link in the chat so we can see your work and how you impacted the community. Drop a link in the chat. So you got all this vitriol <laughs> for the elder, but you sit up here and you smile in white folks' face every day when you go to work. Every day when you go to work and you're sending your children to the public food system and you want to come play pro-black on the internet. F out of here. I said it. You all want to play pro-black on the damn internet. Play y'all pro-black. I'm pro-black, but in the morning time, your child is going to the public food system, but you don't like white <laughs> Hold on, Bob. I got to get this, Bob. I got to get this off. Bob. I got to get this off my chest. Y'all play pro-black. Fake pro-black activists in here. Children go to the public food system. You don't, your money not in black banks, your bank, your money with white folks, you're not even growing your own food. You don't support any black businesses on a daily basis. Let's look at the brands in your house. 
Do you have coral oil? No, nah, you ain't got that. You ain't got that toothbrush in your house. Or true laundry detergent, you ain't got that in your house. Or freedom paper, you ain't got that in your house. Talk all this pro-black stuff and get mad at Dr. Karinga. Fake pro-black activists. Phony and fake. Having done a tenth on what that man has done. He gave us a cultural holiday. He gave us a cultural holiday that is that is celebrated around the world. Kwanzaa is not just celebrated in the U.S. Kwanzaa is celebrated on the continent. Brothers and sisters celebrate Kwanzaa. That's a Pan-African holiday that he created. He gave us the Husia, the Odu Ifa. He gave us the Ma'at. Do you know a lot of your teachers that you hold in high regard learned from Dr. Malana, Malana Karanga? Do you know that? When they talk about operational unity, that's a concept that he came up with. Do you know the whole black, the black conscious movement? Do you know that he was one of the lead developers of the black conscious movement? Do you even know that? He helped to develop that. He helped orchestrate those black power conferences. I think the first one took place in 1966 in Newark, New Jersey. He was right there. His teachings influenced Steve Biko and the black conscious philosophy and black conscious movement over there in South Africa. Come on, man. Show us your impact. Show us your impact. Chibuku, get your fake pro-black self out the chat. Get out the chat. Get out the chat, clown. See, I'm time, I'm time enough for y'all clowns. Bob, it was no coincidence. It was no coincidence why they the ancestors saw a fit Baba. The ancestors saw a fit Baba that uh that they that, I, that I was cultivated in that I was cultivated in in, in Baltimore. Cause I'm time say. enough for these trolls. I'm hey. time enough. I go blow for blow with them because I'm not afraid <laughs> of none of them. You I know, well, let, me meet you out. let me meet you out, Baba, because I hear something in the back. But I'm time enough for you trolls because you ain't going to do nothing. You're a clown. You're clowns. You're clowns. You're not going to do nothing. Talk all this pro-black stuff in the, in the chat and all this, yeah, uh, 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 all this stuff running your mouth. You won't run your mouth to them white folks, though, tomorrow morning when you go to work, will you? You won't do that, will you? You won't okay. run your mouth to them white folks when you go to work tomorrow, will you? Shoot, no. They're going to sit there and eat their little cheese sandwich. You know, you won't run your mouth to those white teachers that's in there misleading your children every day. You won't go in there and talk that pro-black stuff to them, will you? All right, get out of here with that. I say. Go ahead, Bob. Dr. I'm sorry, Bob. I had to. Bob, I was, man, I was looking at the chat, and I was just like, man, these some clowns. Oh, uh, yeah. This is like COINTELPRO all over again. Yeah, Erica, I was deleting them. The nation, and it was just yeah, bananas, yeah. Bob. I was deleting them. I'm like, this ain't the space. This ain't the time for that. You know, y'all acting mad. You know, fake rage, like you was back then. You know what I'm saying? Like you were back then. Like you were rock rocking with the Panthers. You was born in '85. You know what I'm saying? Up in here talking about he or he or this, he or that. You don't know. You you have no idea. You may know what some elders may have told you and that sort of thing, but it's not our place. We're not in that fight with them. That that's my stance on it. My stance is sit back, be quiet, and learn. Come on. How dare you, you know, come at anybody from that generation, anybody from that generation that took up arms, anybody from that generation that dared to be black. You know what I'm saying? In the midst of COINTEL Pro dealing with the FBI. They were kids, man. They, they were. were young people they were. facing unfathomable pressure in their lives. Unfathomable pressure. So whatever went on back then, if I could forgive anybody for anything, I can grant clemency and forgiveness to that whole generation for doing the best that they could. Period. Period. Ashe, Baba. Period. It is not my place to judge a Dr. Karanga, or Geronimo G. Jaga, Angela Davis. It's not my place to judge them. It's my place to learn from them. I don't have to agree with everything they say. We ain't, right. doing, the, we ain't doing the facts, Dr. Karanga. That's fine. I don't have to agree, you know, but I'm not going to disrespect. No. And, no. and then you just have that overarching principles. As African people, we treat our elders a certain way. 
Come on. And, and you, you're not going to treat him like that. Not in my presence. Not when you're not building anything to counter anything you're talking about. Nothing. Have you, are you building something that makes me safe from COINTELPRO? Are you creating any cultural holidays, writing any texts, writing any books? What are you doing? What are you organizing? What are you doing? So don't pull me away from something if you ain't got somewhere else for me to go. Come on. Period. Come on. For brother tell me he joined a nation of Islam. I'm not in the nation of Islam, but I'm not going to tell somebody who joins a nation of Islam not to join. I don't have nowhere else for them to go. If being part of the NOI makes you stop smoking, drinking, and being a brother, husband, and father, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> right. I would, I would say assalamu alaikum. What is, what are we doing, doc? That's right. Right. That's right. So, so here's this man, what, in his 80s? Yeah, he's in his 80s. He's in his 80s. He's a library. He's a walking library. Eat the fish, eat the meat and throw away the bones. You do, it with, right. the, you do it with the devil every day. Every day. You do it with the devil every day. You go pump his gas every day because you got to get to work. You go work his company to help him get rich every day. You even came up on his platform, gave him a little extra money tonight so you can talk bad about Dr. Karank. So until you divest totally, don't tell me who I, who I can't, who's an informant, who's not an informant from the 1960s. I'm not interested. I want to hear from all of them. Why? If, if somebody was an informant, I want to talk to them, too. What was going on? What happened? Because mm. that same pressure might come to you, might come to your child one day. But a lot of these people ain't going to even get that involved, Dr. Ma, to where they got to worry about anything like that. And, and so they can sit back and read books, put on red, black and green outfits and, and, and take on African names. And, and they're not doing nothing in their own neighborhood. If I right, come facts. to your neighborhood, are they, is it, have you built a safe space for the youth in your neighborhood? Can you galvanize 50 people in your community to do something? No. Well, you worse than Dr. Karanga then. If you can't do that, whatever he did, you're worse. Because our children are dying today. Today. It ain't his time no more. He in his 80s. Right. It's your time now. It's your time. What are you doing? You ain't organizing nothing to even be betray. <laughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> what you say? You ain't even they, organizing they don't even want, They don't even want to talk to you. You ain't got no information. No information. What you no. say? Don't got don't got nothing. No yeah. solutions. No you ain't solutions. Got no information. You know. So so get. We got so much work to do right now. If we lose our basic principles, how are we gonna get together? Because you're not just disrespecting him because you think he was a uh, uh, an informant. You're disrespecting him because you're disrespectful. Mm. Period. Mind your manners. And anyway, all for them. Great job, Doctor Mai. Oh, Great you. job. Oh, and it didn't, I didn't miss that he talked about the peace treaty. It took him 50 years, but God dog it better. <laughs> I, I said, hold on. Did, did you did you did you catch did you catch what I said, Baba? So can we I said, can we give can we go to the, the peace treaty that you mentioned at the beginning? Right. Because I wanted because right. I, wanted, I wanted to know, you know, about that because that was yeah, that's monumental, you know. That was to, huge. To, yeah, I never that knew was that that's the place. Yeah. Right. That was huge, you know. And and look, and it's a lesson. They've been arguing for 50 years. 50 some odd years. Yeah. Y'all, let's not do that. Movements, organizations today. Let's learn from that. Let's not do that. Let's not fall into those same traps. Let's avoid that. Let's let our work speak. Yes, let the work speak. Let's let our work yes. speak, man. Let's go out and outbuild each other instead of just trying to outtalk each other. Because mm -hmm. I'm working and you working, black people benefit. Period. That's right. I ain't joining the circus. That's why I don't get on, Doctor. My, I didn't talk about individuals that I don't that I don't agree with uh, uh, ideologically. Right. I don't do that. I'll address no. behaviors. I don't address. I don't address individuals. Yeah. I, I, I refuse to join that circus. Mm. I refuse to do that. Why? You know, we get a few likes and views, maybe a little YouTube check, but I'm a man. I know how to go get money without having to talk on YouTube and, and abandon my principles and my values. 
Mm-hmm. I don't have mm-hmm. to whore myself out to social media for clout. Mm. And my work speaks. I can show you what I do. So I don't have to make somebody else look bad to get somebody to donate or give or enroll in my school. No. I'm good enough. I'm so good at what I do that I can big up every other school while talking about mine and be secure in that. Facts. Because if you don't come to Uhura Academy, I want you to go to Zayax Institute. I want you to go to uh, Akaben House. I want you to go to Nation House and any school under CB, UASC International, New Akibalan, STEM Academy, Freedom Home Academy. If you're not here, go somewhere. That's right. Order conscious ingenuity. I want to see them all, all be successful. Period. And we have to maintain that. When we lose that, when we lose sight of that and our ego get involved and we start coming at each other, we've lost. Mm. We've lost the people. We've lost the point. We not on our job. No, that's facts. I see another that's how brother. I feel about it. I see. No, bro, I, I appreciate you, Bob, you know, dropping in and letting me know. I'm a, I want to add someone else to the chat. I think the, the bill, I see brother <laughs> Sep Unk Ka. I probably butchered it, brother. So please forgive me. <laughs> but peace and love to you, family. Hotep, how Hotep, are you? Hotep. Yeah, I just want to uh, say a few things in uh, regards to the doctor. Uh, it's good that he came on, you know. did I, I caught it kind of late. Did he talk about Kwanzaa and how he came up with that? No, no, no. He talked about that in his last interview. So right, today, uh, today he focused more so on, you know, COINTELPRO and, and what took place, you know, in the 50s all the way to the early 70s with, you know, COINTELPRO and black activist, ag- activism. So he talked about oh, that okay. and, and what COINTELPRO looks like today. OK, yeah, he, he would definitely know about that. He and uh, Mr. Farrakhan, because they're definitely part of the COINTELPRO uh, movement. And this man tortured and beat black women. Uh, did he talk about that? Oh, God. So you one of them people that want to come in. Let me ask you a question. What happened with the... I never read the case, but let me ask you this question, brother. I want to ask you this. What happened with the, the black women? Because I did hear some things, but what was what was going on with that? Yeah, so these, heard, were, these were black women that he just grabbed off of the street and started torturing them? Is that what you're saying, brother? Well... In, 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 a, in a simplistic way, yes. No, it wasn't. That's, that's false. Well, in a, in a, I, I, I actually, I actually, the question, but I knew the answer to it. But what you just said was false. Right. In these, a these weren't in a simplistic way. No, these weren't black women that were randomly targeted. But, but, were they were they beaten and tortured though? I'm not sure. I didn't read the case. Did you oh, read oh you read you read that. Did you, you, did, you read, did you read did you read the case, brother? Or you just I, I, over I, here? Actually, did actually, you read I did the re- case? Did actually, you read the case? Uh, well, I'm answering. I did read a little bit of it, and I read that you read a with- you read a little bit of it. Let right. me ask you a question. How come you didn't know these weren't random females? Then, if you read the case, well, I, I didn't say random. I said they were black women. No, I. Oh my God, I don't. I don't have time for the clowns. Let me. I, I can't, y'all. I can't. I can't with the clowns. Anybody else want to come in? <laughs> Anybody else want to come in? Anybody else want to come in and say a few words? I can't. I can't with the clowns, sir. Post, sir. Post your, post your, um, post your work in the chat so we can see what you did. Bobby, he going into, oh, he he tortured black women and did this yeah. to black women. Yeah, and yeah. He going into yeah. all of that. I'm like, brother, did you read the case with these random black women that got tortured, or did you read the whole case? Oh, well, in the, I said, were they random initially? He said, oh, well, yeah, they, I mean, in a simplistic way, yeah. I knew that that was a lie. I threw that out there right, just to see, right. just to, just to see who I was, see what I was dealing with. But right. yeah, yeah, in a simplistic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. then he said, well, yeah, I read the case. Well, you read the case that you knew that right. it wasn't random. And then you said that it happened. Did you actually read mm-hmm. the case? And what I mean by the case, Bob, is I'm talking about the actual transcripts. So you know right. that when there's a court case, and that's why I tell people all the time, Stop listening to people on the internet. Mm-hmm. If you really want to know about a case, I'm not that invested in going back and reading right. somebody's court, court case. Right. That ain't my. That's not my thing. I'm not a fan. Right. That's that's what the feds and police. You want to go read somebody's court file? I'm not into that. But if you right. really, if you're into that and you want to know, that stuff is public information. You can actually go to case search. You can actually order the transcripts from somebody's case and read the file. And so a lot of these people, I noticed what the brother said is everything started off with, I heard, I heard, well, I heard, well, I heard, well, I heard, well, did you get the transcripts and read the case? Mm -hmm. Because everyone, it seems like we hear these things 
and then all we do is repeat them and then we just yeah and then we we, we regurgitate them we repeat them and then it just spreads right. and before you know it it becomes truth and nobody right. actually did their right. due diligence right right you know, nobody did yeah and nobody did their due diligence you get what right. i'm saying and i just you know and, and, I, and i said in the chat you know we romanticize we want to romanticize uh our leaders our heroes uh but they're human beings you know they're human beings things happen to human beings and and like i say we eat the meat we throw away the bones we are so good at canceling black people mm -hmm. we're so good at saying nothing you did matters because you made this mistake. Then we flip around and we say, well, yeah, white folks made that mistake, but yet you can't discount everything else good that they did. Mm. Mm. I, I'm, I'm not going to discount. I, I, the subject was COINTELPRO. The brother lived <laughs> and was a victim of the COINTELPRO program. That's right. That's the topic. Nothing else that went on in his life makes him less of an expert to talk about COINTELPRO. And it doesn't mean you're dis you're not disrespecting the community by having him on. No, absolutely not. Right. Absolutely. You know, not and, and so the subject was COINTELPRO. And, and what we're not going to do is forget about the topic because people mad at Dr. Karanka. Y'all better pay attention to COINTELPRO because it's happening Today. right now. Facts. And if you are a serious organizer, and I, I'm assuming if you're serious enough to, to, to care uh, about Dr. Karanga's past, you must be a serious organizer. Well, if you're a serious organizer, get the lesson and understand that COINTELPRO is alive and well. And matter of fact, it seems to be self-refueling. Mm. Mm. Social media Plus a COINTELPRO mind. I mean, this is COINTELPRO on steroids now because mm -hmm. everyone has a platform. Mm -hmm. You think he had to, you think that the Panthers had to deal with a rumor mill and people spreading falsehoods. They didn't have Twitter. They didn't have Instagram and, and all these other platforms to where, you know what? If I want to spread a lie, I can go viral spreading one. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, Baba, something you said really spoke to me. You said how, um, you know, we, we throw each, I'm paraphrasing, we throw each other away. And, and you were saying we, you know, we tend to just throw each other away when, when, or canceling. That's what you said. You said we cancel mm -hmm. each other quickly. You know, it's this cancel culture. We don't like somebody. We throw them away, you know, whenever they make a mistake. You said we romanticize, you know, our leaders as, as if they weren't um, infallible. And so it just it just made me think of like, well, what would happen if we had if your tape was rolled? And I'm not talking about you per se, Bob. I'm talking about mm -hmm. the people who are throwing the rocks. Now, I, you, I was raised in the church. I'm no longer a Christian. But I do remember, you know, the story, the, the, the story about them. I don't know if, who, if it was Jesus or somebody, but they say he without sin, he who, who's without sin, cast the first stone or cast the first rock and everybody dropped them and walked away. So I'm just using that story to say this, Baba, right. we sit here and we'll throw a rock and say, he did this, look at his life because whatever was done in the past may have been, you know, on the internet or whatever. What right. if all of your, what if your life was put on the internet? Mm -hmm. What would we see? Mm. You get what I'm saying, Baba? Like yeah. what, what would we yeah. see if your life was put on the internet? If we rolled your tape, starting from when you was born up until now, if your life was put on the internet, if your life was put in an article or in a court case or, right. or, you know, on a, on a, on a YouTube video, what would we see? What would we see? What would we see? Mm -hmm. And so we just right. gotta be, we gotta be careful, Baba. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yes. you gotta be careful. Yes. yes. You, gotta you have be to be careful. very careful because, you know, y'all gotta understand any average person, like myself, we bring something forward and make a stand and speak truth to power. I got some stuff. If someone wanted me to look bad and they dug it deep enough, they'll find some stuff. I ain't done nothing heinous, but I've done some stuff. That if you just put a little hot sauce on, say, like, oh, yeah, that dude right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know Bible, we all have. Yeah. Bible, I have, I have, have. days where mobile collectors call me and people I know. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's it's some it's some some issues unresolved out there. You know what I'm saying? And, and so, um, um, but if someone's sincerely fighting for us, perfection it should not be the criteria, or we ain't gonna have nobody fight. Right? Nope. What you say, Bob? If perfection is the criteria, what's what's going to happen, Bob? Who gonna fight? Nobody's gonna fight. We all gonna walk away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we go. You know, so I mean, I I applaud uh I applaud Dr. Karanga, you know, for just working in his lane in spite of that. Like after his Absolutely. reputation was mud and, and 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 the whole nine yards. I mean, still put together intro to Black Studies. I learned that our history didn't start with slavery in that book my freshman year in college. Mm. I never heard of an African civilization before I read that book. And that book was like my textbook in the black history class I took when I got to Wiley College. Right. So I appreciate him for that. That was a transformative time for me. I don't know what else went on with him, but I know that work changed me. And without that work, I'm not sure Bob Amin is even here. Mm, I, I know that we use Kwanzaa as a vehicle to unify people in Fort Worth, Texas. Every day of, of Kwanzaa, we go to a different black owned business and we will celebrate a principal that day. And, and uh, that was a huge fundraising uh, time for the original Uhuru Academy and without that tool. So I appreciate him for that tool. So mm -hmm. I've used tools that he's created. That don't mean I support harming black women or I'm into that us versus the pack. No, my goal is African liberation. That's my team. My team is black people. I say. And it's and it's it we it's it's too it's too intense out here, too rough out here to cherry pick and say, well don't take nothing from him because he did this. Don't take nothing from him because he didn't nah, man if I can use that I'm gonna use it because my people are out here dying. That's right. Period. Right. That's right. And I ain't asking permission. I'm asking forgiveness. I don't even ask permission from the people whose stuff I'm taking. That's right. <laughs> Forgive me. I took what you created and I helped save black people's lives with it. Forgive me. So, so that that's that's my stance on it. We got no, work to too. do. Yeah, we got that. We got a lot of work to do. Yeah, yeah got a lot of work, work to, to do. do out here. Get out and get the work. You you ain't got to agree with everybody. You ain't got to rock with this person, that person. You know, do you rock with black people? Mm -hmm. Are you are you are you out here putting in the work? That's what counts. That's what counts to me. You know. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you. You brought on. You done brought on some giants the last few weeks. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much, Baba. You done brought that. on some giants the last few weeks. You know, no Dr. Karanga, uh, 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 Baba Quazy, Juwanza. Don't nobody get to talk to Juwanza Kanjufu. No That's more. What How do you do that? That's what they said. That's yeah. what people were saying. Don't talk to nobody. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to get them. It is hard to get them. Yeah. It's hard to get them. It's hard to get that, brother. But, um, but thank you though, Bob. I appreciate it. People, no, man, thank you. I'm they look, they like I'm unsubscribing. I'm like, all right, brother, go ahead. Okay. If heaven, if, if, if heaven yeah. like correct for everyone that unsubscribes, 10 gonna subscribe. So oh, y'all yeah, go man. ahead and unsubscribe. Everyone, I'm putting I'm ashamed this into the ether right now. For I everyone shame. that unsubscribes, 10 gonna subscribe. Because if y'all scared, y'all scared, go to church. Come on. If you're scared, go to church. You know, coming here like a cow would it be in the chat chatting at an 80 something year old man. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, that's, real. That, that, that's real. Yeah. Ooh. That's black tough. power. What? What you want? Chatting at 80 year old. Like, like right. that's some um, chatting at 80 year old. Ain't, like you protecting the movement. I've been all over the country. Where the movement at? Right. Y'all don't get me started on that. Don't get me started on that. Because I did the RBG litmus test. So don't get me started on that. Bob, I said, where you at, Bob? What you say, Bob? You've been all over the country. Where the movement at? Where the movement? I'm gonna call y'all better gone with all that. All these strong stiff. You just don't acting just like these fake gangsters out here talking about no snitching and they the main ones telling. Right. Facts. Facts. Acting just like these these paper gangsters out here, these internet gangsters out here, the main ones telling it. Talking about we. I'm. I'm I'll keep it a stack. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't keep it no damn stack. And yeah, you know, I just be I scrunch my lips so far to the side. 
OG's moving silence, doc. We don't, we don't, we, you know what I'm saying? We ain't got time for all that, man. We ain't got time for all that. We move in silence. We we show great respect. Even if I'm Absolutely. in the midst of somebody I'm at odds with, I show great respect in their presence. You know, because if I am gonna make a move on you, you ain't gonna know. You ain't gonna know, right? I'm not gonna be loud with it. Right. To me, exactly. when you start yelling at people, that's a cry for help for you. Facts. You, you crying out for help. You know, come on, y'all. We, we come on. So, no, great show, great job. When the moderators was on it, you know what I'm saying. You know, and 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 for him to take time out, it's a trip. I, I was listening to Minister Farrakhan earlier today. Then I got hear him tonight, and I'm like, these brothers pushing strong. Minister Farrakhan is what in his ninety, a, a late eighty. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna turn ninety. I he's think what about to turn yeah, he's about to turn. Yeah, he's about to turn and ninety. He, he he remark he giving remarks on Kanye and and and. I, on, you know what I'm saying? I need to, I need to watch it because I, oh, I saw yeah, the flyer. Yeah. I saw the fly. How long did he go? Because I know the minutes. About 53 minutes. I'm listening to it. So Which it's is on, short it's for on him. YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah. I'm listening to it as soon as we get yeah, on. Yeah. Live. So go to NOI.org. Go straight to the site. Okay, and they got it up there. They got it. Yeah, they it got it up there on NOI.org. You know what I'm saying? I'm, again, okay, yeah, I'll I'm not. I'll check yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, Doc, great job. Keep bringing these giants. Keep bringing these libra libraries, these walking on. libraries, libraries on here so we can learn. It, I think there's an African proverb. When you see a, an elder, uh, elder, you're looking at a library. You're looking at a library, Ashe. So keep bringing these libraries to us. It, we ain't going to worry about it. The, these uh, uh the, the disrespectful people because e, you can feel you have a right to feel however you want to feel. feel absolutely absolutely but there are african-centered principles and values that dictate how we express those feelings that's right and i'm very disappointed in everyone who, who had an original name in the comments come that on actor, that wasn't acting original right that wasn't about being an original right my name Hotep Ankh. Then they my whole they talk about my name Hotep Ankh. Yeah. And then, and then cursing at the elder. You like hold up. Elder. hold up, hold up. I thought she was Hotep Ankh. You know that Hotep mean peace. Ankh is life. <laughs> right. I thought she was Hotep Ankh. Yeah. You know. Come on, y'all. Yeah. So, so so great job. Now appreciate your words, Baba. And family in the chat. Appreciate you all coming in. Shay. I'll be live on Dr. Boyce Watkins' platform tomorrow because we had a, uh, we were on the, uh, at the All Black National Convention, there was a panel on the uh, media manipulation of the masses. And so I'll be on his platform tomorrow at 8 p.m., I believe Eastern Standard Time, with the panel members to discuss, you know, the media manipulation of the masses. So make sure, family, you head on over to Dr. Boyce Watkins' channel. I don't know which one because he didn't, I know he has like his channel, then he has, another channel so i don't know which channel is going to be but i know it's going to be on one of his channels at 8 p.m eastern standard time and if Boy's you don't got catch a conglomerate me, right 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 and so if you don't catch me tomorrow family catch me on sunday at 7 p.m eastern standard time uh with the read or for the read book club and if not i'll be live again next tuesday wow. with dr sandy darity dr william darity he's going to come on and we're going to be talking about how to go about uh getting uh, reparations. So with that Steady. said, family, peace and black power.